there's on um, how the reaction has been in the camp and how much does that, a win like that give you the Momentum that you need. Yeah, uh, look, it was a fantastic start. It's exactly what we wanted and, and needed. Um, but I think it's one of those things you can't get too carried away with either. Um, obviously, great to go over there and, and put in a kind of a, a record performance and, and, and go to somewhere different than Paris and, and get the win. Um, and we were pretty happy with a lot of aspects to the game, but it's just a stepping stone now into, into the next weekend in Italy on Sunday. So, um, we know we'll have to progress and get better as, as the competition goes out, even though we started off pretty well and, and, and lads are happy in, in general, but there's always room to improve and um, you know we, we can't take it that that's, has, that's going to be our best performance. We need to push on and try to be better again and Italy will definitely show a different challenge on the weekend. Italy at home would sometimes be a chance to rotate and stuff. Are you getting the sense that that might happen this week or because it's already in the tournament? But yeah, I think it's I think it's tough with um, you know a bye week afterwards and then one one game and then another week off. So lads need minutes and an opportunity to to play and, and make sure they're fit and ready. So uh, we'll have to see if there's too many changes. But it's it's about backing up last week's performance and and um, making sure that we're in the right spot after two games. Jack, it's three months on from the World Cup. I know we spoke to Ollie as many times now about the disappointment. I'm sure nothing is ever going to get over that disappointment. But how important was it to have a win like that for, for the group to just put it to bed in some, some way? Yeah, and I think that's exactly what it did. I think getting the win in France away was just kind of... Like we'd already closed the, the chapter on, on, on the World Cup, but to just our next performance to be a good one and, and to get a win was huge. And um, I, I wouldn't, there was no doubt about it. I think everyone had so much belief that we were going to go over there and do the job in, in Marseille. So I don't think there was a hangover from the World Cup. But it, you know, it, it's definitely important that you're, you're not backing up losses, even though there's months in between it. So um, you know, it was just a, a good start to the campaign, and 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 there was so much energy and a freshness to the squad uh, from the World Cup. I think lads bounced into to camp those first few days and into Portugal, and were so eager to get back to winning ways and to show how good we can be. And I think that was just a snippet of how good we can be on the weekend. Yeah, was that a mindset thing that you really worked on? Or where does that belief come from when you have such a disappointment to be able to, as you said, bounce into camp? And I think everybody spoke in the press conference afterwards that you played with such a belief from the start. I think even, even in games we've lost uh, throughout the years, there's never been a lack of belief. And I think even... Like it's tough because you lose and then there's nothing for months. But even if you go, you know, back to New Zealand in, in 22 and, you know, we lost our first test, there was no dip in belief after losing that to, to then play in the next one. So it's just unfortunate the, the timing of it that you don't get the opportunity to prove yourself the next week after such a big loss like that in the quarter final. So um, the belief's always high. The, I think the standard of player and, and the, the standard of the, the environment and the coaching staff is too high in here for the belief to ever really dip. Um, so lads are just eager and excited to get back in green and, and, and to play in front of, uh, you know, a sold out stadium in Marseille. And it was an un unbelievable atmosphere. It was probably even better when you're, you're going well and you you walk out and it's raucous and it's you know the place is bouncing but then you're, you're going well and it's there's a bit of a hush in the crowd and it's you know you're doing well when, when those kind of things happen so it'll be great to get back to the Viva this week and and, and, and have a sellout and, and hear so many Irish fans uh, back in the seat. Jack, um, finished competition in the back row but you couldn't have done much more in your last two Ireland appearances to, to push in there. Is, is, does this still happen knocking on the coach's door or say, going up to the coach? I know it's all about collecting whatever good for Ireland, but is there players going up? Are you going up to Andy and say, what more can they do? Or give me some more games? Yeah, to yeah, look, uh, it, it definitely. I, I, so sometimes you don't need to go up and and you know to to to, to kind of say your piece or, or or have a word. You know, it's just about taking the opportunities when they come and. Um, I, look, I was unfortunate with with Knox and stuff over the World Cup that I didn't get to get as much game time as I would have liked. But you know that was that that's what it was. And uh, now it's just about taking the opportunities when they come. And I think even now, and I've been around a few years at this stage, you know, you still want to have those conversations because you still want to get better, and you, you never want to just take what you're good at and not worry about what you what you need to improve on. So whether it's having conversations with Faz or Polly or Caddy Sawyer, or Foggs or anything like that, or even uh, J. Owen Rudds in the SNC kind of department. Um, I think it's important to always just be having those conversations, make sure that you're, you're pushing in the right direction, that you're not just happy where you're at, that you want to get better. And I think the, the standard of player is too high here for anyone to say, oh, yeah, I, I, I don't need to have those conversations or I don't need to 
focus on, on what I need to improve on, I'm, I'm happier in maths. So, um, because when you're not on it, th there's so many good players uh, in the squad and then who aren't in the squad as well, especially in the back row, who could come in and do a job. And, you know, you've seen in the past that Faz is more than happy to make calls like that. So, um, yeah, you need to be on it when you, when you get your opportunity, whether it's going to be 16 odd minutes. Uh, off the bench against France or, or, or whatever it'll be for this weekend. So it's uh, that's just the, the standard of the squad is pushing everyone along the whole time. So uh, it's a good place to be, but you, you need to be on it. It's a long time since you've beaten Ireland with the 11 season. What's the key, what's the fundamental thing to, to beating Italy or to, to making sure a fully strong performance for the Italy? I think the, not just the key to beating Italy, but the key to beating anyone is, is, is just playing our game our way. Um, not getting in our own way, not getting in our own heads, being accepting of mistakes um, that it's going to happen because you know you, you're you're always chasing chasing the, the perfect game, but it, that doesn't exist. So um, it's just about being kind of next moment focused, and getting on with the job, and and doing everything you can in the moment in front of your face to, to be at your best. So and and to do your job for the team, and um, so that that's how we get to win the, this this weekend and get a performance. So. Just being moment focused and uh, doing your job to the best of your ability. Jack, have you been working on your uh, I haven't. No, I do a little bit of kicking before just to warm the old feet up. To kind of a throwback to my uh, Gaelic football days, but uh, no, that was uh, Faz. Lads were slagging me afterwards, and I was saying uh, it won't happen again because it, it worked out the other day. But it's one of those things. Uh, if I do it again, I know I'll skew it into touch on the full or something like that. So. Uh, I, like I, I, in the moment, I just kind of I could see it in my periphery that your man and someone had shot up on the outside, and then I could hear Lowy in, in, in the background saying "kick it." So um, I I don't know I, I don't know why I put kicked with my left foot. It's just probably my right foot ever since that injury and thing. I just don't like kicking balls with it. So luckily it worked out, and, and they kicked into touch. Um, but yeah, it was nice to have a, a moment like that anyway. But it, I probably won't be having again anytime soon. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think people were, were pretty happy with it anyway, but uh, yeah. What was it like um, being part of a 6-2 spin and make for Ireland? I know you've done it a few times for Leinster, and had it been something that he had talked about in the past, or did it come as a surprise when the team's name? Uh, yeah, I think it, 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 well, you can kind of see from training throughout the week of how, how it's going to look, but you're never too sure. Um, so yeah, it's something different with Ireland, but it, it's great, you know, especially when you're getting a load of come on at the same time. You know, such an energy and such a buzz. Everyone's, you know, dying to get on, and prove themselves, and and add their value when they can. So, um, I I love being part of a six two. It's pretty, and especially if you're only coming from one position, you're not kind of thinking right. If you know, if Pete comes off here, am I going on to do six? Or if Kalen moves to seven, or if I'm going on for eight or whatever like that? How does it work? So I knew I was only kind of doing one, one role in the weekend. You can put all your focus into that and just make sure you're across all your stuff from from early on in the week. So uh, it definitely helps. But um, it's great, yeah. I, th I thought the lads off the bench did great, uh, whether it be scrum line it or, or around the pitch. So um, yeah, no, it was, it was, uh, it was, it's always good to be involved with six two. Thanks. Last question, uh, Jack. What sort of threat do you think Italy will bring this weekend? Nearly nine years since the win that they've had in the competition, but they did push England very close last week. What do you expect them to bring? I think I think they're they're a quality side and they play a, a really good brand of rugby. Like they throw it around a lot. They're not afraid to play out from anywhere, and it, it's definitely a different challenge um, than France were in the weekend because they've probably gone back to being a bit more pragmatic and, and kicking a lot more. And uh, we know that Italy will will take any opportunity to play out when they can. So uh, we're nearly expecting a, a tougher defensive challenge this weekend than we did previously. So um, we, we know we're going to have to be on it from 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 minute one. Um, you know, Italy, they play with so much passion and emotion and now they're bringing that accuracy as well, uh, which you might have said in the past that they, they, they lacked, but they're, they, they're so close to, to, to getting a few big scalps, they really are, and you, you, can, you can see it when they play and they were unlucky on the weekend against it, uh, England. But, um, you know, we have to do everything in our power to make sure we're on it and, and ready because, um, you know, they, that can't be us that, that, that they do it.